Hello. Uh, welcome to Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Today is March 28th, uh, and this is the EU-US edition. Uh, today, at uh, this point in time, we have myself, Kevin Martins, uh, Mark Waite, Bruno Varachtin, and Sridhar uh, Sivakumar is joining us as well. So um, first things first, we'll go over the agenda, check and see if anyone has any topics they'd like to add, and, uh, we'll, and then we'll get started. So uh, for the agenda today, so we have the latest LTS release that happened last week. Uh, we have the upcoming LTS release for this uh, for April, uh, contributor spotlight update, weekly release update, Google Summer of Code Notes, uh, Jenkins Community Awards update uh, in the sense of uh, what the next steps are, or where we're at with that. Uh, some notes on the version documentation for Jenkins.io. Uh, the tutorial revamps to use Docker Compose, uh, adding sponsor attributions, adding a sponsor attributions page, uh, some recent pull requests submitted by uh, a, a user uh, of uh, Python Hub, aka Sudahensu. So, uh, thanks for that, and uh, some updates on a recent uh, suggestion comment that Gavin Mogan had posted in the Docs Gitter channel. Uh, is there anything else? I see Mark's putting a couple things on there as well. Um, so we've got that. Is there anything else that we want to add to the agenda or does that cover topics for what everyone has? So, oh, oh, it's already in tutorials revamp, isn't it, Bruno? The one that I was about to add, which was Docker yes, install. Indeed. You're right, Mark. Great, okay. Yeah, um, that's the first point here, I think, is uh, the right. Docker so installation. So discuss the goals, the high-level mm -hmm. goals, and uh next steps good okay great okay uh anything else you want to add to the agenda or does that cover everything okay cool so uh first things first so lts 2.440.2 was released last week on march 20th uh, everything went well there was a live stream last week with mark and darren pope to go over all the changes um and that's always uh a the case for any LTS release and they're recorded and uh, stored on the Jenkins YouTube channel. So um, always available to watch after the fact as well. Uh, and then, so the next LTS release will be 2.440.3 that is currently scheduled for April 15th. And Chris Stern has volunteered to be the release lead for that. Uh, thanks to Chris for uh, signing on for that and being the release lead uh, once again. So, uh, We'll have that. We'll have the changelog and upgrade guide in the coming weeks as a pull request for a review. Um, and we'll address things from there. And then um, following this, we're gonna also be looking at the next LTS baseline selection. Uh, so that'll be a discussion in the coming weeks as well. Uh, next up, the contributor spotlight was um, updated this week. Uh, Bruno Varashtin's contributor spotlight page is now live. Uh, we had a little bit of an extended break while I was out of office, so uh, it didn't get published on the regular two-week cadence, but we're back, so uh, we're just going to continue on for two weeks from here, so we're back on a regular schedule. Um, and we had, I uh, worked with Alyssa to make sure that the tweet and LinkedIn posts went out uh, at a more appropriate time for EU time zone so that we get max visibility on that. So uh, thanks for Bruno for uh, con collaborating and participating in the contributor spotlight. Appreciate it. Um, I'm speaking from experience. I know how hard it is to have a spotlight on yourself sometimes. So um, thank you for just being there for that. Next up. Weekly 2.45, one was released this week. Uh, there uh, was a couple issues with the um, initial build, but they were resolved thanks to Damien Duportel and his quick actions. So very much thanks to Damien and, and the Infra team as a whole for taking care of these uh, and resolving any issues that we run into. Uh, something that we also added recently uh, through the suggestion and work of Daniel Beck is that uh, the change logs all now have an individual uh, permalink for each one. Um, so if we go to the Jenkins change log, uh, you'll see this permalink to this entry. And let me just expand, uh, size this up a little bit. So this permalink to this entry is gonna be a link just to that version's change log. Um, and it's the same case for the weekly change log as well. So for 2451, which released this week, there's that. Um, so thanks to Daniel Beck again for uh, coming up with this and, and putting the work in to uh, have this be uh, an option now for people. 
Uh, on the 2.451 uh, release, uh, I just wanted to note that this was an entry that was added after the fact. Um, so uh, it's a note for the Debian and Ubuntu support. It now, uh, Jenkins, so the weekly 2.451 now requires Debian 10 and Ubuntu 20.04 as the minimum supported versions. Uh, this is the result of a packaging pull request uh, linked here. And um, this will be part of the next LTS uh, release as well. So uh, this will be part of that change log and release. Yeah, so Kevin, you okay if I spend a minute on that while you're there? Yeah, please, by all means. Uh, do you want okay, me to go to the packaging so, pull request, Mark? No, no, no. Just this okay. this text is good enough. Just to be sure others who might view the recording understand, the Jenkins project already does not support Debian 9 and does not support Ubuntu 18.04. So that's, that's not a change in the sense that Debian 9 is suddenly supported or was supported before this. It was not. However, non-support and known to not, not work are two very different things. And in the past, we didn't take active measures to lock someone out of an unsupported platform. And this was not intended to lock anyone out. This change is intended to fix this problem that was making it difficult for users on supported operating systems to make use of Unix domain sockets. So in order to fix that, we accepted that users on these outdated platforms won't be able to continue using the Jenkins package installer. If they want to use Jenkins on those unsupported platforms, they'll have to switch to use the war file or to manage the service them of some, themselves some other way. That's all I had to say. Thanks. Great. Thank you very much, Mark. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I recall, the packaging pull request does go through a lot of that information as well. If people want to read further and understand a little bit more in depth about what that means. So mm -hmm. it's always available. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, the Google Summer of Code. Uh, again, we're gearing up towards that. Uh, we've got 34 proposals that were submitted for review. Um, the applicants can have begun to submit to Google uh, as of March 18th, so that'll close in early April, so probably in the next couple of weeks in that sense. Uh, and mentors are reviewing and commenting on the draft proposals, uh, which uh, ideally would have been uh, completed by uh, midnight last night. So. Uh, more to come on that. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, draft proposals can still be submitted uh, through the Google form listed in the Gitter channel. So that's available as well in the GSOC Gitter. Um, Bruno, any other insights, notes uh, for GSOC? Yeah, uh, I'm afraid the draft proposals, uh, it's not possible to submit them anymore. Uh, okay. the, the form has been closed now. The thing is, um, potential contributors have to submit their work to the GSOC portal by April the 2nd. And then mentors will be able to assess and grade uh, the proposals uh, until the end of April, I guess. So if you're a potential contributor, um, don't procrastinate. <laughs> Enter your proposal as soon as possible into the GSOC portal. Great. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that, Bruno. You're welcome. Uh, so next up, uh, Jenkins Community Awards. So the voting period has concluded. Um, thanks to everyone who participated, uh, either nominating or voting, regardless of what you did really means a lot. Uh, so the winners will be announced at CDCon the week of April 15th in Seattle. Uh, and so uh, anyone who's won will be presented with the award there. Um, we'll have the Jenkins Awards and the CDF Awards, uh, CDF Community Awards as a whole as well, uh, which include other projects and the uh, CD Foundation as a an, an, uh, whole. Thanks to all the voters. Mm-hmm. Couldn't have got those votes, uh, couldn't, uh, couldn't win anything without voting. So it's really important. Uh, next up, the version documentation for Jenkins.io. So this has been an ongoing project as a result of Google Summer of Code 2023. Thanks to both Chris Stern and Vandit Singh for their work on this. Um, it's been delayed a bit due to Azure cost saving measures that the infra team is currently working on. Uh, they also have their hands full with a handful of other things that are just a little bit higher priority at the moment. So. Uh, we do have it. It's just a little bit of a uh, lower priority at this point in time. Right. Um, and the Jenkins blog was the most recent edition. 
Yes, uh, the blog's been moved from oh, you've got uh, it Node there. to right. to the blog on the prototype site. So right. um, that is going to be an update as well. That's coming with the version doc site. So uh, I don't know that there will be any uh, major changes to the content or anything like that. I think it's more just making sure that everything is uh, a little bit more clear in what we're looking at. So um, that's it. But that's a nice improvement to have, and that's a good uh, piece to have updated. So. Uh, really great there. Um, and then, yeah, Vandy is the lead developer uh, and is returning to Google Summer Code as a, as a mentor, which is really exciting. Uh, Chris Stern uh, was the lead on that one originally when Google Summer of Code was uh, 2023 was in progress. So um, we've got really great folks on that and they've been working really, really hard on this and uh, diligently through exams and other commitments and everything else. So um, just a lot of work and a lot of uh, patience and that is really appreciated. So thank you to both Chris and Bondi for all of that. Um, and there's further work to be done there. I'm still reviewing. We're still uh, making sure that it's ready to go. And then once we have uh, the Azure cost savings in place, once we have a better handle on some other things, this will become uh, one of the higher priority items again. Uh, next up, so um, another Google Summer of Code 2023 project that we're seeing through to uh, completion uh, is the usage of Docker Compose in tutorials and Jenkins documentation overall. Bruno has been working on this for quite some time, along with Ashutosh in their original uh, project. Um, Bruno has been updating the Maven Python, Python Node.js, and now multi-branch pipeline tutorials to use, all use Docker Compose. Uh, this is amazing, fantastic, just wonderful work. Thank you so much, Bruno, for this. Ashtosh as well. Yep. For just, every, all of this is great. Um, so uh, that being said, Bruno is also working on the Docker installation documentation at this point in time. So uh, things look to be going well, but uh, there might be some, it looks as though there might be something where Docker and Docker is a necessary evil, if I'm yeah. reading that correctly, Bruno. Maybe, maybe not. If you don't mind, um, I'd like to get your insight, uh, the three of you, uh, about that. Uh, I'm wondering, as I'm progressing with the rewriting of this uh, guide or tutorial, I'm wondering what is the end goal? Is it to get people up to speed with a running Jenkins instance while using Docker? So if that's the main goal, it will look more or less like the previous tutorials we addressed. So it will be pretty short, I would say, uh, thanks to Docker Compose. Or would it be that, and on top of that, a detailed explanation of why it's working this way? So should we dig a little deeper and talk about what's behind the curtain? Or <laughs> even worse, uh, or should we have a second approach that deals with, uh, okay, we've got something that works, but we may build it your way with the plugins you need because we offer a lot of plugins with the default installation using Docker Compose, but maybe that's not the plugins you're looking for. Or another step, which would be, okay, we've got the thing that works all by itself. We've got the thing that works with your plugins you want, but what about having a specific agent now with all the specific tools you need? As you noted previously, we already have something for Maven, Node, uh, Python, Golang, Android. So should we let people know how to generically um, add something, a tool that they need to build a specific agent with Docker? Or, and that's the problematic part for me, all of that plus... I'd like to build a Docker image thanks to this Docker Compose guide. Uh, but I'm not so sure that's such a good idea, uh, this very last point, because this is problematic security-wise, as we would have to use Docker in Docker or Docker on Docker, as far as I know. So I don't know how far we'd like to go with this guide. Okay, so Kevin, are you okay if I I'm gonna I'm gonna offer my relatively strongly held opinion and let other people disagree with me. <laughs> okay, okay. Right. so trying to trying to justify my opinion, the other Jenkins install guides, and we have several, right? We have Jenkins on Windows, we have Jenkins on Linux, we have Jenkins with the WAR file. So, so Jenkins on Windows is how do you install it with the MSI package? Jenkins on Linux describes how you install it with either a DEB file or an RPM file. 
and it describes it for Red Hat, for Fedora, for Debian, for Ubuntu. So it, it then we've got how do you install with the war file? And and eat, and then we've got another page, which is how do you install on other systems that are not explicitly supported by the Jenkins project, but you could can refer to them like how to use Brew or how to install on FreeBSD or Solaris. So we've we've got each of those. So for me, those are the those are the fundamental concept of what the install section describes. And each of them stops at the point where you've completed the Jenkins setup wizard and installed the set of plugins that are in the setup wizard. So for me, that says the first alternative that Bruno offered is what's what's there in the what's already there in the existing install guides. We don't tell them how to install another plugin. We don't tell them how to manage their war-based installation or their Linux RPM-based or their Deb-based installation with configuration as code. We don't tell them how to build a Docker container because the install instructions are just to get you to the point of running this, having completed the setup wizard that you've now got a, a reasonable set of plugins installed and that set of plugins will do interesting and useful things. So for me, I was thinking we should choose the first one on the list, start a running J Jenkins instance with Docker. However, now let's take, now I'm going to put my lawyer for the devil hat on my devil's advocate hat, right? And say, but that's, that's less than what the users need, right? Because many users will then ask, okay, how do I build a container image? And the answer is you don't. Because in this <laughs> environment, it's not container image build capable, right? And and the same story answers for the war based installation, for the RPM based installation by default on any on the Windows installation by default on any of those. You can't build a container image because you have to do an awful lot of extra setup. So my my sort of impassioned plea is, I think we should stop at item one or possibly item two, explain why it works that way. But even there, we don't explain why. No, maybe we do. Okay, now again, the lawyer stopping, the lawyer for the devil has now realized we have a system D based installer, right? But we have an entire set of instructions on how do you do things with system D. We have a page that talks about how do you manage things with system D separate from the install guide, but it's very mm -hmm. much there. Right. And so maybe this lobbies that we should do option one, start a running Jenkins instance with Docker and then have a separate page that talks about why it works that way and what they can do to extend it and what they can do to change various parameters, et cetera. All right, now I'm going to stop talking and listen to other people. So I actually agree with you, Mark, on uh, either the first or second one potentially being the what we go with in for the installation page. Um, like you said, it's more uh, it's more aligned with the other installation docs. We're not going and doing anything extra on those other pages. Um, if we don't want to set that precedent here, we shouldn't start. Um, but we also have things like the Docker, like in the pipeline documentation section, there's Docker in, using Docker in pipeline. Um, so there are other pages that exist for this sort of information. Uh, adding a second page for, you know, post Docker installation setup or something might be uh, an alternative that we could put together. And that contains the why, the customization stuff, the agent specifics, like those sort of things um, where it's not necessarily the pipeline documentation because it's prior to that this this all this information will be before that happens mm -hmm. so i see why it could go in the installation docs but i think it might be worthy of its own separate page or even like uh, a bigger section of that installation docs or maybe we go with that that like information um but making it clear that it's specific for docker and all of this um Okay, Bruno, your opinion? Um, you have a... 
Yeah, right. uh, it means less work uh, for me, uh, your proposal. So that sounds kind of cool. Uh, no, it totally makes sense. I was um, afraid that I was too much enthusiastic and putting too many things into one just installation guide and not installation and know everything about Docker. Uh, so yeah, maybe too many things at the same place, but why not create uh, new pages in the near future with all the rest of the information I wanted to write into that thing. So maybe the PR will be available in the coming weeks instead of the coming months then. So that's pretty good news. Well, and for, for me, the, the model that's used with the DEB and the RPM installer where the install guide gives very short short steps and tries to be as short as possible. Do this, do this, do this, and you're done. And you've got a deb-based or an RPM-based install. That, that aligns with the first. And then the added page that talks about system D and, and this is how you do it. Is is a good story to tell. I think it really is. So so we now, okay, good. So it sounds like you're okay with option one as the oh, yeah. the the target for this page, with in the future the addition of why does it work that way? Because teaching them about talking about Docker Compose and how do you manage plugins under Docker Compose and how do you manage how do you do your own deployment of with using a composed based solution. I think is very interesting and would get a lot of a lot of traction from people about oh okay I could have my own little repository that looks like the Jenkins repository that was the basis for the install instructions and I extend it with my needs and still have it managed as docker. Yep, thank you for your insights folks. Mm -hmm. No, thank you, Bruno, for all the work and, and creating the discussion and like putting this all out there. Um, we can't do this without that work and that initiation. So like, thank you. You're welcome. Um, thank you. Yeah. And, I, and like, I, I'm more than happy to help with it in whatever way I can do whatever I can to help out building out those other pages and like putting that information down. Because um, I think it I think it would be really beneficial for users to have that documentation in the Jenkins area. Um, Cause I know that we link to the Docker documentation within like the Docker and pipeline page and other areas. So having it be there would be really convenient and you know, take away that having to navigate other places to get that same information. That you yep. So right. yeah, cool. Um, yeah, a couple other things still need to be taken care of with the position of Docker Compose up. Uh, yeah, no, this is all really great. Again, thanks to Bruno and Ashtosh for their work on this. Um, yeah, we'll, and we'll see more updates going forward. Uh, next up, so um, something that we've been discussing and that's being worked on still, uh, JFrog reached out, asked if they could be attributed as a sponsor for Jenkins.io. We said, yes, absolutely, that's the right thing. Uh, and then we decided, well, we want to have a proper sponsor attribution for all sponsors and have uh, potentially have a separate page for that. So uh, that conversation has been had. Basil Crow's taken it upon himself to create uh, the sponsor attributions draft and uh, has this uh, has been working on this. The discussion has been ongoing in governance board meetings. Um, so this is something that uh, is still being developed, still being worked on um, and Basil uh, does ha now have access to uh, more detailed information so that we can uh, figure out what levels everyone uh, would ideally be at and what their uh, sponsorships would essentially uh, be measured by in terms of uh, levels. Um, Anchor, the highest gold, silver, bronze accordingly, and mirrors are a different type of sponsorship, so they would have their own category in and of itself as well. Um, but yeah, um, so that's still ongoing. And we'll have more details when they're available. Um, uh, just this week, we had a few pull requests come through from uh, the user Pythor Hub, aka Sudan Shu. So again, just wanted to say thank you for the contributions. Um, I've been able to review two of the three pull requests. Um, one just came in a couple hours ago, so I haven't had a chance to sit down and look through it. Uh, but I did leave a comment on it because it looked as though uh, some of the work they had been doing on another pull request. Yeah. Um, so this was one of the, this is the first one they opened up and it looks as though their most recent one includes updates that they had made to 
the parent pond information. So I was able to at least comment and uh, up and share that because I, I wasn't sure if that was intended or um, if this was meant to just stick to that. So um, yeah, further reviews needed. Uh, I know that um, Jibnik had been also uh, commented on one of them and had actually added some insight. Yeah, so um, thanks to them for also helping with that. Uh, and yeah, the users have been really receptive. The contributors have been on top of things and making updates as requested. So yeah, great, great to see. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, more to come on that as well. Um, and the last thing that I had on the agenda, uh, if anyone, if no one else has anything, was um, Gavin Mogan recently commented in the Doc Skitter channel that uh, the Doc Sig page itself is a little out of date or it needs to be updated. Uh, so I'm working on this right now, but basically making sure that the members are all up to date, um, making sure that descriptions are correct, topics are correct, et cetera. Um, but looking at the projects, um, a, a good amount of these are in a completed status or in uh, the epic that they're linked to has at least been closed uh, or completed. So um, a lot of these are past projects and need to be a, uh, labeled properly in that sense. So uh, I'm going through reworking some of the uh, phrasing and stuff in here so that it is more accurate. Um, and then just, yeah, I'm putting, to, I'm working on that right now to make sure that this is uh, as current as it can be. So uh, more to come on that. And there'll be pull requests that I'll submit for review on that. Uh, so a little bit. Kevin, Kevin, back yeah. to that page, if we can, because Bruno, you and I, I think need to do something similar for platform SIG. So mm -hmm. right now, what, what my thought was is in terms of participants, anyone who's not attend docs, attended docs office hours in the last year and not submitted a pull request in the last year should be dropped from the list to the Jenkins docs. A year is more than enough time to say they're not a participant. And what that would do is reduce this list to leads, Mark Wait and Kevin Martins, and because I lead Asia and he leads Europe, U e US. And with you, Bruno, on the participants list, Meg McRoberts on the participants list, and Chris Stern on the participants list. And, and that's, I think, um, we don't have enough other active participants to put them on the participants list uh, we've had one or two who drop in occasionally, and if they drop in more frequently, we can add them. And, and even uh, worse than that, I think we have a SIG that does not exist anymore. Uh, wasn't there a hardware or something, SIG? Uh, I think we got no. rid of that from the... Okay, so, cool. so the SIG list right now is, as far as I know, showing active SIGs, but okay. we certainly had a number of... Uh, SIGs in the past that are no longer active, like uh, Cloud Native SIG. It existed, and there are, if you look in the history of the site, you can find information mm -hmm. about Cloud Native SIG, but it's long since not been not been an active SIG. So those, as far as I know, the list of SIGs is accurate. We just need to to be sure that let's let's admit that it's time to update the lead and participants list. This one was particularly glaring because. I haven't led the Docs Office Hours US for what a year or more, Kevin. Right? I mean, it's been a very long time since I was leading this this session. Yeah, outside of the couple instances when I've been out or haven't been able to, it's been right. over a year now. So, yeah. And then um, I know I know we mentioned the list of participants, but I'm also going to make sure Von Dietz in there. So, I mean, between Von Dietz and Chris, oh, right, Von Dietz site, is even if absolutely. he doesn't show up to the. Yeah, yeah, even if he doesn't that's, show that's names, a clear often... place where you're you're absolutely right. Von Dietz should be listed there as a contributor, be, as a participant, because he's very much involved in docs. Yes, absolutely. And so, yeah, so I'm also trying to keep that in mind, even if uh, folks don't necessarily show up to office hours every week, the contributions still matter. So mm -hmm. keep right. an eye on good, that. Good, 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 good thought. Very good. Um, but yeah, and so, yeah, so I'm going to be working on updating this page, making sure that everything's labeled accordingly, updating anchors and a couple other things that I've seen that need to be uh, adjusted. But yeah, I um, also adjusted the time frame here since it's an hour earlier than what it says. But um, yeah, so that's just something that uh, Gavin had mentioned recently on Jitter and wanted to, and I wanted to address that. So we're doing, we're taking the steps. Uh, anything else that anyone wants to talk about today or does that cover every Every idea anyone had? Cool. All right. We are at time. So 
Uh, we'll go ahead and stop the recording in just a second here. It'll be the video will be available in 24 to 48 hours. We'll cross post on community uh, discourse. And as always, take care, stay safe. And until next week, thank you and have a good rest of your day.